Hello everyone, so today I want to do my first episode of lock designs and ideas. So the first lock, why not, will be the warded lock. This is a squire, it's quite an old one. It just has 804 on the front and with uh, some other Willen Hall stops, England or something. This one is a warded lock as you can see and if you don't know what a warded lock is let's just zoom this in most of you would know by now but basically a warded lock just has these pieces of metal that stick out on the inside of the, the core and they prevent a simple key from turning just by blocking it and the key has to have those little cutouts like this in certain places to allow the rest of the key to move. All that stops the key from moving are those wards in the random positions inside of the lock. And um, it's because of warded locks that we got skeleton keys. And the skeleton key is basically this key with all the extra bits of key shaved off. And the only part you really need to worry about is the part at the end here that actually actuates the little springs or bolt that's inside of the lock that keeps the shackle in. Um, fairly, They're fairly good for outdoor applications. I believe they're supposed to be quite good at um, performance when in harsh conditions or something. But here you can have, we have an example of a skeleton key. It has everything shaved off except the part that you need to um, actuate the lock to open it. So let's zoom out a bit so we can see the key working. Oh by the way it also has a bit of warding on that keyway there you can see those little teeth sticking out that's the warding on the on the profile. So it has to have warding for going just to allow the right key to go in and warding to allow the key to turn and of course when you turn the key it snaps it open you can see there's no cutouts on here to hold it in which tells us that there is a little it only locks on this side and, and you can't see the locking part on the in, on the inside there snaps closed nicely and to pick it, you just need a skeleton key. So here's the skeleton key. This one's a Southward one, but they all do the same job. And okay, this one is a little bit too short, so it's clearly got to be the bigger one then, I guess. Or well, maybe, maybe it's actually the double. If it is the double, it just means, yeah, so it means that there are two little springs inside there that are keeping that closed. Sometimes it's one, sometimes it's two. The design of this particular lock though, it's not very, um, what I'd say, tough. I wouldn't say it's the toughest design since it's riveted together and whatever. So it could be broken with, I think, a couple heavy hammer strikes. And the material is kind of old, so you could hacksaw through that pretty easy. It's a nice old lock though, but not very, not really up to scratch for today's demands. But how could we bring this old design, improve it? So here's the ideas part. Um, I've seen a couple of locks that are warded and they have multiple springs inside there that you have to actuate all at the same time. So that would stop something, especially if they're all random, in random places and stuff, that would make using something like this much difficult, more difficult, because this relies on, you know, basically having those, um, those two springs to always be at the back there. So you'd ha if you had like multiple of them inside there, as well as random warding and so on, um, I guess that would be one way of, of making it harder to open up with skeleton keys anyway. Um, I think depending on the design you could still pull on the shackle to maybe tension those wires, I don't know, and then try and use this to 
actuate them all and that's if they bind but otherwise that's a watered lock for you where else can we say the material on this is kind of old I'm not sure what it is though if it's some kind of aluminium or soft steel or whatever iron I don't know but that's an old squire it's a watered lock the watered locks for the most part are outdated and we've moved on from them but I gave you my two cents on it this one has a standard kind of lock body and shackle shackle is exposed it doesn't have a shackle guard maybe you could make one with a shackle guard if you really wanted to I personally would say it was a waste of time just make a use a uh, more modern design for the core and if you if you're able to use a shackle guard use the shackle guard and for anyone who doesn't know what a shackle guard is I'll just grab this American here and you can see the American has this shackle guard here it goes it's this piece of metal here that goes up and it shields the shackle from bolt cutters I think they're quite needed for um, modern day applications considering that the thieves like to use bolt cutters or grinders so you can at least help to mitigate the risk of using bolt cutters by putting sh shackle guards on there and then a chain in there to make it more difficult anyway so that's my two cents um, on warded locks they come in this format obviously but more commonly I think you see them as laminated locks especially on cheap ones so yep that's that design and my two cents on it so thanks for watching we'll talk to you in the next one where we look at a different type of lock and think and talk about how it could be improved etc etc so thanks for watching and bye bye